Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we thank you for this great event tonight. And God, we ask that you would bless each and every person that is tuned in tonight, God. We thank you for the NAACP, God, and we ask that you would continue to guide their leadership and guide their advocacy and provide them with the strength and the will to continue to go forward. God, we ask that you bless each and every one of the award recipients tonight, God. And God, we say thank you just for being able to be here. And even though we're virtual, God, we are still united in purpose. And so we say thank you. And we'll forever be grateful and thankful unto you. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. Into the light, 
Congratulations, Rockford, on your annual Freedom Fund Banquet. I am so proud to be here today. I know that we are doing things virtually because of COVID, and COVID has had an impact on all of our lives. But we want to thank you for what you're doing. We want you to practice your social distancing. We want you to wear your mask, and we want you to get vaccinated. Vaccines save lives, and many of us know that we have lost so many people, loved ones, families, and friends due to COVID. Let's make a difference. The NAACP has been around for over 112 years. We plan on being here a lot longer, but it takes all of us. And to remember that we are the oldest, the boldest, the most loved, the most hated civil rights organization in the world. Let's get back to the basis. Let's adjust to our new normal and let's continue to do what we need to do in the name of the NAACP. Again, congratulations, Rockford Branch NAACP. Good evening. And thank you for joining us in our 2021 Freedom Fund Awards Ceremony. My name is Rhonda Greer Robinson. I am the president of the Rockford Branch NAACP. National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Our theme this year is moving forward. To demonstrate how we are moving forward, we will be auctioning off an extraordinary live picture full of words, modeling, disappointment, healing, unity, justice, peace, and the force of our outstanding community award winners. These funds allows us to fulfill the NAACP mission to ensure that policies, educational, social, economic, equality of all persons, and to eliminate racial-based discrimination. We do that by addressing issues in our community. Auctioning will begin after Ronnie rolls out words of colors. You must start bidding in the chat box with your bid and your email address. Bidding will continue throughout the program. Presenting Ronnie from the Underground Art Gallery Extraordinaire. everyone. I am Fanny Owens. I am legal redress for NAACP in Rockford and Illinois. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our Freedom Fund chairman. Uh, her name is Brendalyn Langdon and she's the chairman. And she is from Illinois. She came here, uh, she relocated back to Rockford and she has she has done a lot of things in the community. She is um, a community activist. She has been in Girl Scouts where she's held every, literally every position. She's a member of the Order of the Eastern, Eastern Star since 1999. And she was a member of the Myrtle Beach Chamber from 2009 to 2015. 
She has done a lot of things in Rockford. She goes to the uh, city council. She speaks her mind. So we're happy to have your board. We're happy that you're a community active and you, we just think that you're doing a great job. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brendalyn Langdon, but around town people know me as Pinky. I am the, this year's chair for the 2021 Freedom Fund Award. In Rockford, Illinois, our banquet is uh, due to the current pandemic. We were unable to gather for our traditional in-person uh, banquet, but this won't stop us from gathering virtually to celebrate our success over this past year and to cheer on this year's Community Award winners. The NNACP has been a shining light in a very dark year, and this event will be no different. Let's do it together virtually. And at this time, I will introduce our branch officers, our president, Rhonda Greer Robinson, our first vice president, Mercedes Jorner, second vice president, Wayne Turner, our secretary, Tamara Butler, myself, our treasurer, Charlene Fote, and our assistant treasurer, Dorothy Redd. The NAACP was founded in February 12, 1909. It is the nation's oldest and largest and most widely recognized grassroots civil rights organization. It's more, it has more than a half a million members and supporters throughout the United States and the world premier advocates for civil rights. The mission statement of the National Association of Advancement of Colored People is to ensure a society in which all individuals have equal rights without discrimination based on race. The vision of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons and eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. My name is Terrell Lewis. I'm a Civil Life member of the Rockford NAACP branch and Chairman of the Armed Services and Veterans Outreach Committee, as well as the Adjutant and Junior Vice, as of next month, Senior Vice, Commander of the American Legion Post 1207, 
I'm also the Services and Personnel Coordinator of the Winnebago County Veterans Association Commission, and I belong to several other organizations. The other members of the committee also belong and serve in a wide spectrum of veterans organizations. The goals of the Committee on Armed Services and Veterans Affairs include seeking to establish a working relationship with government services and agencies having a responsibility in the affairs of members of the various armed services and veterans, and to see that their programs are administered fairly and justly to members of the minority community. We serve as a center of information on matters affecting the members of the active duty, reserves, National Guard, and veterans. We maintain a repository of materials, information, and forms to be used in assisting veterans and or dependents of veterans and military personnel with their problems. Receive and act on all complaints relative to acts of discrimination on account of race, color, creed, or denial of benefits to which they are entitled because of discrimination. If you are a veteran or concerned with veterans' issues, consider joining us. When I mentioned to my post commander that I was asked to mention veterans and mental health today, he said, look at a veteran and you will see a mental health problem. And it's true, not all of us have PTSD or survivor's guilt or any of the big named issues, but we all have issues. Sometimes it's simple things. One day we're doing important things with massive amounts of responsibility, whether we're responsible for million dollar pieces of equipment or we're responsible for the lives of our friends. The next day, we're starting over. The people we graduated with have been busy starting careers and families, and we're out of the service four or more years behind, often with skills that aren't marketable, and we struggle to compete. Some of us eventually learn to cope, others don't. The Veterans Administration reports that nearly 20 veterans commit suicide every day, roughly one in every 72 minutes, and that average has been increasing every year. Please remember this number, 1-800-273-8255. If you are a veteran or know a veteran in crisis, especially who may be contemplating suicide, please call 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Charlene Fold and I'm a registered nurse and I'm a member of the Health Committee for the NAACP. I am here to talk a little bit about the COVID vaccine. I know people have heard enough about this and they don't want to hear any more, but what I wanted to tell you is that I am a preponderant of getting the vaccine and having people vaccinated. I do not like the idea that when I go out, I have to worry about if somebody has had the vaccine, if they haven't had the vaccine, and with everything opening up this summer, Everybody should be vaccinated so that you can rest assured that you won't be uh, subjected to getting COVID. So when you take the vaccine, you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your family, you're protecting people around you. And that's what I stress is that people get the vaccine so that they are fully vaccinated and that they don't have that worry. When you're out and about this summer, you don't want to have to be, oh, well, let's see, I got to move from that person. I got to move from that person. You want to be safe. And if everybody is getting the vaccine, then you will be safe. Hello, my name is Mary Gubby Lee. I'm a licensed social worker and a licensed clinical professional counselor. It is my honor and privilege to be able to talk with you today about mental health. And what I wanted to address is the effects of this pandemic on all of our mental health. Think of what we've gone through for the last 14 months. Lockdowns, homeschool, no traveling, no eating in restaurants, increased prices, especially for things like gas and food, social distancing, wearing protective equipment, missing our family and our friends, being unemployed, losing our jobs, ruining our holidays, no hugs, no handshakes, no smiles, and lots more. So what's happening is we're fearing our own health and the health of our other loved ones. We're fearing losing our jobs, our income. We've changed our eating patterns, our sleeping patterns. If we had a health problem, probably had gotten worse. If we had a mental health problem, probably has gotten worse. And we're also seeing a big increase in the use of alcohol and other drugs. 
pandemics can cause mental illness, but ca pandemics can also cause those with mental illness to get worse. But what happens is this pandemic is causing neurological changes in our brain, actual chemical changes in our brain. So what are the things that can cause in humans that, that has to do with our mental health? Post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorders, depression and substance use disorders. With po post-traumatic stress disorder, we're seeing big increases in a chemical that's called cortisol. And we all need that cortisol, but when there is too much of it and it's running all the time, it causes us to gain weight, acne, heart attacks, and even stroke. Another chemical that's upset when we have post-traumatic stress disorder is adrenaline. And again, it's a hormone that we need. It helps us prepare for the fight or the flight. But when there's too much going, there's too much blood circulating, there's too much increased breathing, and we're also always on the alert. With those anxiety disorders, we're pe seeing people have generalized anxiety disorder, panic attacks, and so phobias, especially social phobias. And with those people who are suffering from depression, we're seeing all kinds of things. People eating all the time, not eating at all. Sleeping all the time, not sleeping at all. Having no interest in anything, not wanting to go anywhere. And with substance use disorders, in the calendar year of 2020, alcohol sales rose nationally 262%. And this is very sad and very scary because we know only 81% of people with substance use disorders are even getting any treatment. So what is all this causing in our brains with this chemistry? People are different now. Have you noticed that? They're just not themselves. We have people more with crisis. People are less patient, less self-control, easily losing their temper. They need more de-escalation. We're seeing a huge increase in domestic violence and really in all violent crimes. And these things are not just going away. We think that because there's a vaccine, people will all just get better. But see, these brain chemistry changes have got to be changed back. Now, the good news is we can change them back. And there's some things that actually we might get better at soon because we know what happened with just wearing a mask. And it's very important to do that. And we need to do it for our safety and the safety of others. But when you wear a mask, there's no smile. You're not smiling and no one else is seeing your smile. Smiles are so important because they reassure others. It's our way of really communicating with others and feeling like we're trustworthy, but we also do belong. It's our social connection to smile with other people. And just a gentle smile is just a sign of compassion. And when we smile, our brain is actually releasing chemistry that helps us fight off our stress. And when other people are receiving those smiles, the same thing is happening. The brain is releasing chemistry. And also it does increase what we call serotonin, something that helps us decrease our depression. So just losing those smiles. Can we heal? Absolutely. It's going to take a process. So what do we need to do? We need to be kind to our mind. We need to be kind to other people. We have to take care of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual help. And there are many places we can go to get help. And for that, if you have any questions or concerns, check out the NAMI Northern Illinois website and you can find places where you can get help. And remember, there is no health without mental health. Hello, my name is Dennis Littlejohn, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving as the president of the NAACP Youth Chapter. Our goal in the Youth Chapter is to engage and enlighten our youth of the greater Rockford area and be a beacon of hope for our future generations to come. I would like to thank those who help us fight for social justice and civil rights as it is a continuous fight. We thank our participants and award recipients for your participation in our annual Freedom Fund event. I hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Brooke Littlejohn and I am a member of the Youth and College Division. My name is Ben Little John. I am also a member of the Youth and College Division. We want as many youth and teens to come out as possible and support. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys.
the NAACP 2021 Jane Addams Freedom Award. At the local branch level, this is the highest honor that a NAACP can bestow on an individual or organization. This person or organization has gone beyond and above to make a difference in the community and has worked towards the advancement of social unity and equality. Hi, my name is Kelly Jackson and I am so proud to announce the winner of the award for NAACP and that would be Marilyn Height Ross. R Marilyn is from Rockford. She grew up in Rockford, was born and raised and lived on um, the west side of Rockford and bloomed and uh, became, um, fast forward, the state's attorney. She, Marilyn is the eight, was the 18th state's attorney for Winnebago County in Illinois. She is the first African American and the first woman to be, to hold this position. She served in this position with more than 25 years of prosecution, litigation, and supervisory experience in, with Illinois. As state's attorney for Cook County, Winnebago County, and McLean County. She also headed the, um, she also headed the department supervising 40 attorneys um, totaling in the staff approximately 100 other staff members. She's a strong leader and she was a chief legal advisor to Winnebago County elected officials. Marilyn served as an adjunct, adjunct professor with experience teaching business law, constitutional law, and criminal law. She also did civil civil rights litigate liability law and administrative law. Her strong leadership and uh, chief legal advisor to Winnebago County elected officials, um, she demonstrated um, was an asset to this community. During her tenure um, in Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office, she created and implemented specialized units, including Special Prosecution Division, Public, in, Public Integrity Unit, Cold Case Unit, Elder Abuse Unit, Law Enforcement Officers, and coordinates and hosts trainings for annual ethics training for prosecution, prosecutors and law enforcement officers. In 2016, Marilyn Height Ross was appointed as an assistant state's attorney to Special Prosecutor Kane County's uh, attorney Joseph McMahon in the prosecution case of Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke for um, the murder of 16-year-old Laquan McDonald, and that made national news. I was proud to see her on that team, and she did a wonderful job. Marilyn has been um, an advocate for civil rights and prosecution against um, the law, with the law in our community, and she's well deserving of this award, and I'm so happy that she's receiving it. Congratulations, Marilyn, it's well deserved. Good evening, my name is Marilyn Height Ross, and it is an honor to be here today, giving honor to God who's the head of my life. I would like to thank the NAACP Awards Committee for bestowing upon me this prestigious award. I am reminded that a wise man plans his way, but allows the Lord to direct his steps. And throughout my career, the Lord has orchestrated my steps. For he has said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and for an expected end. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I stand here before you this evening 
having served as your 18th Winnebago County State's Attorney. I stand here because of my African ancestors who bore the brunt of the slave masters because they wanted their seed, their progeny, their legacy to live and to have opportunities that they could only imagine. I feel very blessed to have my African ancestor blood flowing through my veins because surviving slavery was an arduous task. Often they were troubled on every side, but not distressed. They were perplexed, but not in despair. They were persecuted, but not forsaken. They were cast down, but not destroyed. And neither are we. For every time the Lord blesses you to have a position in which to serve your community, you have earned it. You've earned it through the blood of your African ancestors, by every life that was given, and by every blood drop that was shed at the master's foot. I thank God for the opportunity, having served Winnebago County as your 18th state's attorney, a position previously held for over 100 years by all male whites. Only a God can do something that miraculous. And so as I ponder this award, I humbly accept it on behalf of my African ancestors who knew that their future children would have a chance when glass ceilings were shattered, when doors closed were opened, and when their chains were broken. That opportunity has come for all of us. We no longer strive for the moon, we aim for the stars. It has a, been a blessing and a privilege having served as your 18th state's attorney for Winnebago County. I thank you, NAACP, for this award. I, may God bless you, and may God bless America. NAACP Outstanding Business Award is presented to an individual or organization for their sacrifice of time and energy to humanitarian efforts. This is Pinky Langdon with NAACP. We are at Rockford's Art Deli with um, our Business of the Year recipients, location of employment, or business, that's what I should say. And we have um, Steve here. And Steve, can you tell us a little bit about uh, working here? What do you find so great about it? Um, you know, because it looks like a fun place to work. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, one of my favorite things about working here is uh, being able to be creative. Uh, you know, we get to take artwork and put it on different garments and stuff and get to watch people like and enjoy that coming to this shop and, you know, get really excited about that stuff. I'm an artist myself, so like my, my absolute favorite part is just being able to take artwork and figure out the colors and, you know, how it looks on a garment. Um, I do a lot of like crazy tinkering and stuff around the shop as well. Um, you know, I, I like to figure out problems, engineer solutions to get through those problems, but also it's just fun like being downtown and being able to say what's up to people as they come in and you know, it's ultimately it's just a pretty fun place to work. Well from the looks of it, it looks like you get a lot of repeat business, so do you look forward to certain clients that you yeah, know that you sure. get to come in? Definitely and definitely a lot of familiar faces um, and it's always cool to say what's up to people. I've been here for about a year okay. so uh, I've only got the experience that I do so far but I started from working in the basement reclaiming screens and cleaning ink containers and stuff and now I like kind of oversee a lot of the production and kind of research and development I'm kind of a nerd so I enjoy that aspect of it so you're in your element I told, yes I am in my <laughs> element <laughs> see thanks so much yeah thank you it was awesome meeting you you too yep. hi I'm Jared Hennis, owner of Rockford Art Deli. Thank you so much for the NAACP for this honor. Myself and Rockford Art Deli are very humbled to rec be recognized and given the Outstanding Business Award. 
Rockford Art Deli has always been a community print shop that cares about the community, working together, and being a part of the same love for the city. Rad's success has always been a result of the hard work of the Rad team and the Rockford Art Deli, or the Rockford area believing in us and trusting us to spread pride of being a Rockfordian. It's been such an amazing experience seeing how a simple t-shirt could help change the outlook of a city and be able to give back in so many different ways. We look forward to the future of what we can do together to help make this a better place. Thank you so much. The NAACP 2021 Community Service Award is presented to an individual or organization for their sacrifice of time and energy to humanitarian efforts. Hey, I am just so excited just to tell you a little bit about Total Faith Community Church. One of the things I love about us is our motto, where we're a church where everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord overall. So some of the things that we're doing at our church, which I think are amazing, first of all, we have our food pantry, which is open one day a month. But the thing that's so unique about our pantry is we don't pass out a bag or a box. We allow people to come in with dignity, pick the things that they would like off the shelf, whether it be food, hygiene items, or household items. They get to pick those things themselves, and we have someone to help carry them out to their car. They have food enough for three to four days. One of the other things that I think is amazing is that our church is not focused inward. We are focused outward. We want to help those in our community that are disadvantaged, whether it be uh, through uh, food, housing, or economical, physical, or spiritual help um, is one of the things that we do. We partnership from the very beginning of our church with the Rockford Rescue Mission, and we share their motto, sharing hope and help in Jesus' name to bring people from homelessness and despair towards personal and spiritual wholeness. We have volunteered at the mission from our inception. Our church has been um, established about 13 years now. We also, now this is really amazing, all of the money that comes into our church, whether it be through tithes and offering or just personal donations, we give 10% back to the community. There are probably about 12 to 15 organizations that are uh, beneficiaries of our donations, but one is some of the ones that we donate towards are, of course, the Rockford Rescue Mission, um, <laughs> pregnancy, pregnancy Care Center, we donate to the YMCA, we donate to, of course, NAACP, and there are many others that I just can't think of off the top of my head. Not only do we donate our money, but we donate our time. All of our leaders in our church are dedicated to volunteering at different organizations. Hello there, I am Pastor Steve Cozy from Total Faith Community Church. I am here today to accept the Community Service Award. I thank God for the NAACP for selecting us for an award today. Um, I also must thank God for he's the one who has blessed us to be able to do the work that he has set before us. I pray for Total Faith, my Total Faith family, men, women, and children of Total Faith who have also helped in the community to be a blessing to the community. So today I say thank you. I say thank you to uh, the president of the NAACP, Ms. Rhonda. God bless you all and thank you for this award. Amen. Hi, my name is Jennifer Knizel and I just wanted to say a few words about the Women's March. Uh, the first time I heard about the Women's March was a few years ago from a dear friend, Alicia Neubauer. And at that time I became a little interested in some of the things they were doing for the community and just basically for uh, reaching uh, and educating women and other groups that have been marginalized in the past. So I am very excited about um, the nomination for this award for them and I know they're going to do great things in the future. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Mary McNamara Bernston and I am accepting this award on behalf of Women's March Rockford. I abbreviate Women's March Rockford to be WMR. Women's March Rockford is humbled by this nomination and award. We accept it in the honor of the late Alicia Neubauer, whom we lost last year to metastatic breast cancer. She was one of the many original founding members of Women's March Rockford. Her vision of love and action has been a guide for Women's March Rockford. 
thank you to the Rockford chapter of the NAACP. We admire your work and look to you for direction in our advocacy efforts. Women's March Rockford's mission is simple. We believe that all human beings should be treated with dignity and respect, and we will work to ensure that our laws and behaviors reflect these values. Women's March purpose is also simple. We are an intersectional, nonpartisan collective voice for women's issues and advocacy efforts. We serve our community as a collaborative conduit to needed services, resources, and representation. Intersectionality, that is at the foundation of our organization. Intersectionality is the framework for conceptualizing a person or a group of people or a social problem as affected by several discriminations and disadvantages. It takes into account people's overlapping identities and experiences in order to understand the complexity of prejudices they face. Intersectionality can be described as layers of discrimination that are separately and collectively considered to reach an understanding about an individual's past, present, or future life experience. Women's March Rockford has focused on expanding its reach in the last couple of years, both in representation of our members and in our presence in the community. We work collaboratively with the Mayor's Office on Domestic Violence and Human Trafficking Prevention, Women's Space and Women's Suffrage Centennial, the League of Women Voters of Greater Rockford, NAMI, the Liam Foundation, and others to ensure that the resources and information available is available to all women in all communities. This year, Women's March Rockford became an official 501c4. We recently installed a new board of directors. Our board of directors is a serious powerhouse of 15 impressive women from our community and includes attorneys, therapists, teachers and professors, labor and nonprofit leaders, marketing and PR executives, and grassroots activists. Women's March is humbled to receive this award from the NAACP. One of Women's March active members is the president of the NAACP, Rhonda Robinson. And I believe that our collaborative work has given women in both organizations an increased sense of confidence, professional skill development, and a new enthusiastic, diverse, and dynamic support network. Women are already doing the hard work. Now is the time to uplift one another, publicly share each other's accomplishments, respect each other's choices, and recognize and appreciate our differences. Thank you from all Women's March Rockford members. We are humbled and grateful for this award. The NAACP 2021 NAACP Jewel Lee Powell Unsung Hero Award is presented to a person whose past efforts to make a difference in the interests of unity and equality have gone unrecognized. Hi, my name is Stephen Gates. I'm an art teacher here in Rock the 205. I'm here to congratulate Ms. Taryn Turner for her accomplishments and for her NAACP award. I've known Taryn for, I'd say, about 15 years or so now. Uh, I've worked with her at Lewis Lemon. I've worked with her at Haskell. And now here, as she's a principal now here at Ellis, I've been working with her for, I would say, over seven years now. Um, she's just a beautiful person. Uh, she's definitely, uh, she definitely should be getting this award and deserving of it. I tease her and I often tell her that if you know if we weren't working together because we've been working together for so long, it would feel like almost like a divor divorce. Um, she's a beautiful person with the, the children. She understands kids and she's very good at working with the staff and keeping us motivated. She's just an incredible leader. I've worked with her on the National Equity Project now for two years now. And I enjoy working with her. It wouldn't be the same without her. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't working with her because I've been working with her for so long. Um, once again, congratulations, Ms. Turner. I love you and take care. Hello, my name is Taryn Turner and I'm the proud principal of Ellis Elementary School in Rockford, Illinois. It is with great pride that I accept this honor as a recipient of the Jewel Lee Powell Unsung Hero Award granted by the NAACP Rockford Branch. 
I first want to thank the Freedom Fund and the Rockford branch of the NAACP for their activism and advocacy to uplift the African American community in Rockford. My brief message in receipt of this award is the importance of a vision and collaboration. Maya Angelou once said, in order to know where you're going, you must first know where you've been. Once we know our foundation and our history is affirmed, the vision can be established and goals can be set. It has always been my vision for Ellis to be an exemplary school, a school in which our families take pride in having their children attend, a school where families know high expectations are set for children and the adults here show up for their children every day because they believe in what they can achieve. I am thankful to have a dynamic team to do this work with. Every adult at Ellis that works with children is clear about their purpose and they are diligent in their craft. They have a caring heart, yet they are fueled with a sense of urgency. We have no time to waste. I am thankful that I can lead and support the collective efforts of our team. We show up daily to do the most important work and our reward comes when our children are successful. Thank you to the NAACP for the opportunity to be recognized. It is because of God, my family support, and a dynamic team that I am able to lead with purpose for the good of Ellis students and the good of the Ellis Heights community as a whole. Thank you. Okay. To Judge Gwen Gully, congratulations on receiving the Jewel Powell Unsung Award. We appreciate the work you continue to do for our community. Thank you for being a role model to our youth. My mom worked with the youth until her death in 2013, and she was always out in the community. Thank you, NAACP. And again, congratulations, Judge Gwen Gully. I would like to thank the Rockford chapter of the NAACP for presenting me with this award. I am honored and humbled by the recognition. As the scripture says, to whom much is given, much is required. Whatever I have done or will do is because I feel it is my responsibility and I owe it to this community to give back. There is an awful lot of work to be done, especially in these challenging times. And if we all do just a little bit and come together, we can make a big difference. Thank you to the NAACP for what you are doing to promote equality. The work that you do is just as relevant today as it was years ago. We are continuing to fight to keep the progress we have made and not go back. But there is still a lot of work to be done. I can remember Jewel Powell, Willie Bell, and others working very hard and fighting the fight to make a difference in this community and we stand on their shoulders. So it is my honor to accept this award. And again, thank you. Okay, the NAACP 2021 Next Generation Youth Award. The nominee should be a 21 and under person who has demonstrated a commitment to the community through volunteerism and recognized by his or her peers as an advocate for social justice. Hello, my name is Tamir Bell and I would like to begin by thanking all of those involved who work tirelessly to recognize local individuals for their excellence and perseverance in our community. This is not just an award, rather it is my path to a strong personal future. As I continue to work for my community, I look forward to being able to make change and be a transformer for our communities of color through public service in our great city. Good afternoon again. My name is Tamara Butler and I also serve as the membership chair for Rockford NAACP branch 3028. We want to thank you for attending our virtual Freedom Fund event and we hope that this opportunity has encouraged you to seek membership with our branch. Membership dues are only $30 for adults and can be paid, paid online or with the NAACP officer. The branch meets the third Monday of the month at 6 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you. Hi everybody. I'm Pinky Langdon. I am the chair of this year's Freedom Fund event. I just want to let everybody know that today is also our branch president's Rhonda 
Robinson's birthday. So if we could all just take a moment and wish her a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. You know we love you. Happy birthday, sweet Rhonda. Happy birthday to you. First, we would like to thank Ms. Langdon for the outstanding work she did with our 2021 Freedom Fund Award Ceremony. I have a quote from you from Michelle Obama. You cannot take your freedoms for granted. Just like generations who have come before you, you have to do your part to preserve, protect these freedoms by Michelle Obama. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.